Hello, uh, let's talk about magnesium today. Um, when, you're, when you're doing intermittent fasting, particularly if you're doing a little bit longer fast, 48 hours, 72 hours or, or longer especially, uh, one of the things that, that you could become deficient in is magnesium. It's one of the only things really. And um, if you, as long as you're getting enough water and, and all, you're, you're gonna be fine with these little bit longer fasts if you can if you can handle it if you can handle the the uh, fasting itself I did early on in my journey uh, I did some 48 a few 48 hour fasts and a couple of 72 hour fasts and uh, if you are getting deficient in magnesium you might start having some leg cramps and uh, and you, you just don't want to become, magnesium is really necessary, so you don't want to become deficient in magnesium. And let me just throw in, I, I'm not trying to sell you anything. I, I have no supplements or uh, special, I have nothing to sell whatsoever. I'm just trying to share my journey. If you want to hear my full journey, I've created a pre playlist, a playlist on my channel, and uh, you can start and watch that full playlist to hear my whole story. I won't uh, repeat it all, but I, I lost a lot of weight and improved my health a lot. So, uh, but it, at any rate, magnesium is one of the, the things that you could become deficient in, particularly if you're doing a little bit longer fast. So uh, you need to, to uh, find some way to take care of that. One of the first things I did, uh, Dr. Jason Fung talks about uh, soaking in Epsom salt in a bath, you know, running a hot bath, putting Epsom salt in there and, uh, and soaking in that. And so I, I use this, this Dr. Teal's, uh, pure Epsom salt and would put that in a hot bath and soak in that. And it feels really, feels really great doing that anyway. Uh, very relaxing, just soaking in a hot bath, I guess, but the Epsom salt was good. And you absorb, you absorb a lot of magnesium uh, through your skin that way. It's a very, very effective way to, uh, to get your magnesium that you need. And uh, there's even spas that they have now uh, where you can go and uh, soak in a, uh, in a bath that, uh, you know, it's full of Epsom salt it's kind of becoming a thing, a popular thing, and um, it, it has a lot of a lot of benefits. And um, there's also a spray. For a while, I was using a spray. I don't have a sample of that here to show you, but uh, it's kind of an oily spray. A little mine was a little white bottle with a little pump spray on top, and you can spray that on your calves and massage it in. Uh, and you absorb, again, absorb magnesium through, it's a magnesium spray and, and you absorb it through your skin. And again, another real effective way and you can put it right on the air, like the muscles where you were having muscle cramps and, and that sort of thing. Um, there's also uh, like capsules, magnesium capsules that you can use. This was the first one that I began using uh, this, the type of magnesium in here is magnesium oxide. Uh, the only thing I didn't like about this one is it gave me diarrhea. <laughs> and, and I since learned that sometimes this is used for people who are constipated and it'll get your bowels moving for sure. Um, one problem though is it, it does, you're not absorbing as much of it as you should either. So, you know, if you're wanting to um, you know, supplement the magnesium in your body. If you're passing most of it through, that, that's not very good. I've uh, since heard and that magnesium citrate is better. And I found this and, uh, and I use this every day now uh, just so I don't become deficient in magnesium. Um, even though I'm not doing any long-term fasting now, magnesium is still a, a real necessary thing and and that we all need. And, and this magnesium citrate works great. It, it absorb, you absorb it better. And, and for me, it doesn't give me diarrhea. So 
this is the one I would recommend if you were going to, uh, you know, use some kind of source, like some kind of supplemental source like that. Um, there are a lot of foods that have magnesium and, uh, uh, one that a lot of people like is dark chocolate. Uh, if I, I occasionally use this and uh, it's a 95% uh, dark chocolate and um, it's a real good source of magnesium as well. Uh, I'm real careful not to eat very much of it because my one of my main goals has always been to keep my carbohydrates really low and um, Fortunately, this dark chocolate doesn't have uh, very many carbohydrates. Uh, the serving size is supposed to be four pieces. Of the, you know, this is kind of up, you know, cut up into little squares uh, where it's easy to break off these little squares. And the serving size is four pieces, four of those little pieces. And that's, um, let's see, eight grams of carbohydrates uh, for those four pieces. I never have more than two pieces though, so that I'm getting four grams of carbs from this when I have it. And um, so that's a pretty good source of, of magnesium. There are plenty of foods uh, that have, that are good sources of magnesium. So, you know, if you're, if you're no longer doing any long-term dieting, you may get enough magnesium just in the, in the foods that you eat and some, some sources, uh, some good sources of foods that have uh, magnesium or avocados. That's one thing uh, through my whole, through my journey has been 18 months where I've lost, first lost 82 pounds, gained seven pounds back on purpose, and I'm 75 pounds down from now from where I started. And avocados have been a thing all along because uh, while I do some, while I do intermittent fasting, I try, when I do eat, I try to eat the, in a keto type of uh, diet and um, they try to live the keto lifestyle when I am eating. And avocados are a great uh, keto food because they uh, have their high in healthy fats and uh, low in carbohydrates. Uh, so that's, I'm going to go through a long list here of 2021 foods that are rich in. Uh, in magnesium. Some of these I won't eat because there are too many carbohydrates. Now, if, if blood sugar is not an issue for you, all of these foods would probably be fine for you. But my whole goal is to keep my blood sugar in check. So there's some of these that I won't eat. Um, uh, another good source is nuts. There's different kinds of nuts that, that are good sources of, of, uh, of magnesium. Cashews are particularly uh, a good nut for magnesium, but cashews are one of the nuts that I choose not to eat uh, because the carbohydrate count is higher than some of the other nuts that I do eat. Macadamia nuts and pecans are the two main nuts uh, that I eat, and I'll eat some walnuts, but no cashew. I love cashews. Cashews used to be one of my favorite nuts before I started trying to watch my carbohydrates more carefully. Uh, there are certain seeds that are that are a good source of magnesium. Whole grains are uh, a good source of magnesium. Again, I uh, I cut whole grains. I cut grains altogether out of my diet and most seeds too. So uh, even those are those are good sources of magnesium. I just don't eat them, and uh, because of the carbohydrates and what they do to my blood sugar. Fatty fish are a good source of, of magnesium. Uh, salmon uh, in particular is a good fatty fish and I love salmon. So we do eat salmon probably once a week or so and love it. Uh, tofu is another source of magnesium. Uh, I just won't eat it. I, 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 there's no taste and there's just no reason for me to do that. I'd rather soak in a in a Epsom salt bath or take some of these capsules for magnesium or eat a little square of dark chocolate or anything but eat tofu. I see no reason to eat tofu. But, you know, for people that do eat it, you're getting your magnesium there and are getting some uh, legumes. That's beans, peas, lentils. 
those are all uh, good sources of magnesium as well. Um, I have chosen to not eat uh, hardly any legumes, no beef, peas, or lentils. Even though they're not super high in carbohydrates, they do have uh, more carbs than I, I'm, I stay super low on my carbs. I try to keep it under pretty 20 grams a day. Uh, don't always achieve that. I would never go over 50 and try to keep it under 20. And so I, I leave out beans, peas, and lentil, any, any legumes I leave out. Uh, bananas are another good source of magnesium, but again, that's something that you won't see me eating. I don't, don't eat bananas because of what they do to my blood sugar. Uh, leafy greens are a good source. So a good leafy green salad or whatever that, that's a good source of magnesium. And that is something I'll eat because the, the carbs are, are more agreeable there. Tuna is a good source. Again, another good fatty fish. Uh, high fat yogurt. Yogurt's a good source of magnesium. Um, and I won't eat any kind of yogurt except high fat. Cause if you go low fat, you're, you're increasing the carbs and, and that's, that's something I've determined not to do. And it's made a real difference in my health and brought my blood sugar back and back to normal. Uh, kefir, uh, which I have never, to my knowledge, eaten. Uh, they call it yogurt's weird uncle. It's a sour taste, and and from what I've heard, it's an acquired taste. I've again, I've never had it. I haven't even, I've never looked to see what the the carb count is on kefir, but I've done okay without it. <laughs> and uh, I'm not sure that I like the sound of it. Shard is another uh, source. Almonds are also almonds are another nut that are a good source of magnesium. Almonds are a great, they say, I think that almonds are one of those superfoods and they're a good source of magnesium. Uh, again, they're not high on my list of nuts because uh, the carb count on those is a little higher than the, than the macadamia nuts and the pecans. Um, I stick with the lowest carb nuts. And for me, that is uh, macadamias and, and uh, pecans because I'm very, very strict on my carb count and it's paid off for me. Uh, figs are another uh, source of magnesium. Again, I don't eat those too high. The carbs are too much. Soybeans are another good source. And a lot of people eat soybeans. Um, and again, if they're not struggling with blood sugar like me, that that's probably a good source of nutrition though they're pretty high in protein and um, but for me it's too many too many carbohydrates wild rice is another good source of magnesium but again I don't eat any kind of rice not white rice not brown rice not wild no rice for me so uh, that's I won't eat that and uh, dried coriander flaxseed dates and oatmeal uh, Again, I know a lot of people love oatmeal and probably love dates, but I, those are just things that I don't eat because they're too high in carbohydrates. Again, I have a playlist that tells my whole story, so I won't keep repeating it each uh, on each video. But if you're interested in how I lost uh, 82 pounds and brought my A1C from a 9.9 .9 down to a 4.9 without any medication, Watch, watch that playlist. It starts with a video by Dr. Jason Fung. And uh, thank you.